I didn't grow up in performing arts. Um, the first tap class I ever walked into, that was the first time I had ever been in a dance studio. I was always comparing myself to those people, you know, like, is this even worthwhile? They're so good at it. You know, they have this, this strong grasp of everything. All I had was the, the passion. So that kind of felt like it was a lot, like it was almost insurmountable. Um, like I was almost too late to the game. Overcoming that, I had to realize for myself and my personal background and, you know, my parents not really being about it, I was doing this for me. Oh, that's so good. I am so excited to share with you this interview I had with Bruce today. He is a beginning adult tap dancer who is completely self-taught through online tap instruction. But he has faced a lot of hurdles and challenges along the way that you're going to get to hear in this awesome interview. And I want you, while you're listening, to think about the hurdles and challenges that you might be facing as a beginning adult tap dancer. And if you stick around to the end, I have something for you that's not only going to help you identify what those hurdles might be for you, but give you some strategies to help you overcome them. Here we go. Okay, so I have Bruce here today. Hi, Bruce. Thank you so hey. much for joining me and sharing your experience and um, your knowledge with viewers on YouTube and, and social media. We're just going to jump right in. So Bruce, go ahead and just introduce yourself and tell us uh, your tap story, really. Um, why you okay. wanted to learn, how you got started, how it's going, all of that. All right. Um, Bruce Brown, been in for about uh, 14 years in the Air Force. Um, I grew up loving tap, um, but never got to enjoy it um, growing up. Um, and there's, you know, there's some backstory to that, but I won't bore anybody with that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I decided, you know, there's nothing holding me back now. Um, there's, you know, there's no reason to, to not dance and do what, you know, what I want to do. So, yeah, you know, I, I jumped, uh, you know, one day I made a decision. I made the call. I was going to do it. Um, I jumped on YouTube, um, found some videos uh, specifically by Jen Vermes, um, or Vimes, I hope I'm saying that right. Sorry. <laughs> um, Jen, if you watch this, we love you. Yep. <laughs> 100% um, came in clutch. Um, and, uh, you know, due to, you know, my, my location and some of my work schedule, uh, that's kind of how I started. Uh, I began um, kind of chronicling, I guess is the best word to say it, um, via various social media outlets, uh, my journey, you know, being self-taught. And I, I did it because it was primarily a necessity. Um, just because of, you know, where I'm at and, you know, what I do and uh, limitations uh, in terms of trying to find formal education. Um, so I kind of branched out from there, uh, you know, making my videos, you know, getting feedback, um, which the TAP community, especially those on Facebook, were amazing. Um, and I'm kind of just doing me for me. That's awesome. And so I found Bruce's videos. That's actually how I found Bruce was he was chronicling, as he said, like day, how many days is it now, Bruce? What day? Maybe almost 600 days. Yeah. Something like that. So that's amazing. So he's been making videos with like day, whatever day it is, and just, and just tapping. So he's watching YouTube videos and then recording his progress. And so explain again, why, um, like studio training wasn't going to work for you. Um, largely just my location. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm currently stationed in North Carolina. Um, where I'm at, most of the TAP community is either based um, either in Wilmington or in Raleigh. Um, and even the ones that are in the local area, um, between my uh, scheduling conflicts, um, just with work and also just monetary costs, you know, just trying to find studio space, you know, in general, um, doesn't necessarily fit into, you know, my life. So, it, you know, I had to adapt, if you will, you know, get a, t you know, a, a dance board. Um, you know, fine tap shoes. Um, I have very large feet. So that was a hardship that I had to figure out. Um, mm -hmm. Ended up with J Sam's. I lucked out. Yeah. They, they fit perfectly. Um, though I didn't say this earlier, um, I am waiting on a custom pair of tap shoes. So new wow. tap shoe, you know, so we'll see on um, their SAF shoes. So okay. um, we'll see how that one goes. Um, you know, so first pair of custom tap shoes. Um, but yeah, you know, I kind of just threw it all together. I found some videos, you know, I joined a few communities and I, I pressed from there. Um, so you're like a, a real YouTube success story. <laughs> I never thought of it like that, but I, you know, I appreciate it. So. Yeah, that's amazing. So when you were like up against that, like the ledge, if you will, right? Like, am I going to do this or am I not going to do this? What were like the fears or the hesitations that might resonate with some people watching that, that were maybe tempting you to not do it? If anything, when I looked online for content, 
um, you know, whether it was, you know, Facebook group or Instagram or YouTube, um, a lot of the content that's out there is heavily based from professionals, um, you know, people who, and I say professionals, but people who do it for a living in some way, shape or form, whether they're dance teachers, you know, they're dancers themselves, or choreographers, you know, what have you, actors, um, you know, people who have some sort of formal training, you know, background and more importantly, a passion, you know, um, all I had was the, the passion, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I, I never, you know, I didn't grow up in performing arts. Um, you know, I have zero experience. Um, so I think the first, first tap class I ever walked into, that was the first time I had ever been in a dance studio. Um, you know, seeing the inside of a studio, you know, if you were, um, when I could get tap classes, you know, workshops and such. Um, so a lot of it had to do with that. I was always comparing myself mm. to those people. Um, you know, like, is this even worthwhile? You know, they're so good at it. You know, they have this, you know, this, this strong grasp of everything, um, you know, um, and I could do the, you know, the, the, the mindset of being athletic is one thing, but also the musicality of it, which not having that background, you know, I never played an instrument growing up or anything like that. Uh, I think the only thing I, class I had for music was an eighth grade music history class. And that mm -hmm. fixated on more on dates and names than concepts, you know? Yeah. Um, so that kind of felt like it was a lot, like it was almost insurmountable. Um, like I was almost too late to the game, if mm. you will. Um, so that was my primary fear, um, going into it, um, overcoming that, um, I had to realize for myself and my personal background and, you know, my parents not really being about it. Um, I was doing this for me, mm. you know, it, you know, it, it, you know, I, I don't think I can do anything professionally, you know, maybe that changes. I don't know. Um, but what I do know is I enjoy it. I love it and I can do it and interact with some, you know, amazing people that I've had the opportunity to interact with, um, you know, between workshops and, um, recently the, well, twice now, yes, to, um, the North Carolina Rhythm Tap Festival. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to go out there and, you know, meet some of the people that I've talked to online for so long and, you know, go to different workshops and meet those people. So it's, it's been a blast, um, to say the least. That's awesome. I bet that resonates so much with people, that idea of like, am I too late to the game? Especially because I think that we have this um, idea that tap dancing is always is only meant for the stage. Yep. That like the end goal is like the recital. Or and I know there are tons of people who are like, I don't want to tap because I don't want to be on the stage. Like yep. if that's what it means, like I don't want to go to a studio because I don't want to have to wear a costume and get right. up on a stage, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so even just to hear that reinforced that like that that doesn't have to be the way it looks. Like right. it doesn't have to be. Uh, for whatever reason you want it to be or don't want it to be, uh, tap is something that when you learn it um, and when you can do it for you, it's it's incredible and it's it's there's so much joy and there is such a community, the tap community and it's it's funny. I think most communities like once you start to engage, you realize that it's kind of small, you sure. know that like you you see yeah. people here and you see people there and you make connections and everyone's just cheering each other on like let yes. let's do it. It's so good. So now that you overcame that, which of course, like that's a constant overcoming, like for me, for everyone, right? Yeah. Um, what have you seen as like the joys and the benefits personally to you um, in your day-to-day -day tap dancing? Honestly, um, growing up, so uh, I've always been drawn towards things that have a, we'll say a technical nature to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I say technical loosely, not necessarily technology, but just, you know, there's a meticulousness to it. You know, mm -hmm. you have to focus you have to be present. Um, and that's always been a struggle for me, just being present in certain things sometimes, you know. So it forces me in a way to be present, but mm -hmm. I enjoy that journey, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, you know, I enjoy that journey, you know, learning steps, you know, things like focusing on my, you know, my weight, you know, how my weight shifts and, you know, the sound, the musicality, which I've been doing a crash course of, you know, since I started this, um, especially when it came to uh, improv, which I was encouraged to attempt to do early um, when I, when I started, because at first I was just doing drills, you know, yeah. I would, you know, I'd pick a step and all right, you know, shuffles, you know, waltz clog, you know, and of course all the different names for the Shirley yeah. Temple. Um, yes. <laughs> pick, your, um, pick your name. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, and that in turn intru introduced me to a lot of the history and, the, you know, the culture of how people have different names for different steps. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, you know, just kind of, you know, going through that that journey, I, I, I enjoy that because to me, you know, at least from folks from the musicality perspective of it, right, there is no end to it. You know, there is no plateau whereas with like other we'll say athletic pursuits 
um, at least in my view, I'll say that before I say this, because people might not like me, um, you know, like running, you know, I get why people enjoy running, you know, why they do it, but it, it doesn't give me, it has no staying power with me. You know, I can go out there and I run, you know, because I'm in the military, you know, I, um, you know, I understand the runner's high and, you know, you're out there and you're doing your thing, but there's no staying power to me. It's, it's a means to an end, if you will. Um, you know, weightlifting, same thing, you know, yes, you know, but I get people, they enjoy their body image and their ability to perform, but, you know, I need something that I guess I turn my brain off when I'm doing those pursuits. Whereas with tap, I can't turn my brain off. You know, it is focusing my mind and my body. Um, you know, at least for me, you know, I, I see more of a connection in that room. Um, so yeah, obviously from the, you know, just being active, but also, you know, it, it feeds my soul. Mm -hmm. So that's why it, it will be so long as I can, I can swing it. It will be a lifelong thing. That's so. awesome. I love that. And, and it is a workout. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what advice or encouragement do you have for adults that want to start um, later in their life? And later is obviously it can mean anything, right? It can mean right. they feel like they're 23 and it's later. It can be that they're 73 and they feel right. like it's later. Um, so what invite advice or encouragement do you have um, either large and like philosophical or even just like the technical advice? Like what are a couple of things you can, people can take with them after this conversation with you today? Um, you know, do it for you. Um, whatever that reason is, you know, that only you, you, I say you, not you, but you as, as an individual, only you can define that. Um, you know, don't, you know, if your goal is to, you know, you want to perform on stage, perform on stage, you know, if you just want to show up to tap jams and jazz jams, you know, so you see yourself as a, you know, a percussionist, do that too. Um, you know, but do it for you. And that's really what is holding anyone back, um, at the risk of sounding cheesy. Um, you know, it's the technical side of it. Um, reach out, you know, if you can, you know, social media is a great resource, um, you know, that interconnectedness, you know, if you will, um, one can encourage you to keep going, you know, when you get people that are talking to you and, hey, do this, do that, you know, but, you know, there's, there's an interaction there, you know, that can be empowering, um, you know, to ask questions, you know, like for me, I think we've talked about shoes quite a bit here, um, but, you know, learning the different types of shoes, you know, build ups, you know, I had to reach out and ask, you know, is this, you know, is this a me thing? You know, is there a reason why they have all these, you know, these different types of shoes, you know, just be willing to ask, you know, there's no such thing as a, a dumb question, if you will. Um, the tap community is there. Um, and, you know, enjoy yourself. Last mm -hmm. but not least, um, you know, you're doing it for you. It's not because it's a job or a chore or anything else. You do it for you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess that's really what I can leave anybody with. Um, that's awesome. Well, Bruce, how, if people want to see more of you, and connect with you, how can they do that? Um, I'm very active in, um, or try to be active in some of the Facebook tap dance groups, so the tap dance community, um, uh, the tap dance club as well on uh, Facebook, Instagram, so it'll be Mustafa332, so M-O-O-S-T-A-F-A 332. Um, uh, I'm also on TikTok uh, as uh, the hoofer noob, if memory serves. Um, <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, you know, if, if you want to reach out, feel free, you know, we can talk. Hopefully I can learn something from, from whoever decides to, you know, come in and, and uh, check me out. And That's awesome. Well, I will link all of that stuff uh, below in the description. So if you want to connect with Bruce, you want to be inspired by his journey, uh, then you are welcome to do that and join those communities also. So Bruce, um, thank you so much. Uh, this has been an encouragement to me. I know to so many others and we're excited to see what's next for you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Wasn't that so good? I know you were encouraged by Bruce's story and his journey. So what are your hurdles in your tap dancing? Maybe it is balance, maybe it's ankle strength or muscle memory, or maybe you don't even know. Well, if you can isolate the root of those main issues, then you can apply techniques today that will transform your tap dancing and get you results quickly. So take the quiz below. It is designed to help you identify what that core struggle is and give you practical techniques and tips that you can apply today to transform your tap dancing and get over those hurdles quickly. Go ahead and take that quiz. And while you're at it, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.